Hey, today we are going to do a liquid DNB idea in 20 minutes. Hey, I thought it'd be interesting to do another 20 minutes kind of against the clock type thing. Uh, this one is liquid DNB. Maybe you could comment and tell me who this sounds like. Yeah, I wanted to show you from beginning to end with as much talking as I could remember to do whilst under some time pressure uh, about the process and about what I was doing. So we're going to build up a kick and a snare pattern, some hats, some additional hats to increase the pace if we need them. Uh, write a quick drum break to go under that. I'm going to build a respace, some chords, a little arpeggiated synth line based off those chords, and then drop in a vocal sample. This project will be up on my Patreon along with a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, so you'll be able to download it and inspect it if you're interested in these sounds or the routing or something particular about this project. But I thought you might find it interesting to see me go from zero to an idea as fast as I possibly can. Let's do it. Okay, as you already know, we are doing a 20 minute speed run at writing some liquid DNB. So here's the 20 minute timer. I'm hitting start. Okay, we got to get moving. Uh, I need a kick sample. Actually, I like that. Let's, whoops. Uh, I'm going to use a drum rack for all of this. So let's get a drum rack first off and then let's find that kick again. Yeah, nice. Put that in here and I want to just trim the start point because otherwise it doesn't work out. It'll sound wonky. So now that kick happens. It's a little bit long. We'll just fade it out a little bit there. Cool. So now that's nice and punchy. Now we need a, a, a snare and what I really want is a really clappy snare. Ooh. Let's use that and then I'm going to layer it. So I'm going to group this sampler here and then I'm going to search for a clap. Now I really like 808 claps. Yeah, uh, those recorded claps aren't quite what we want. So these together now. Let's adjust the balance a bit. I'm going to pitch this guy up, maybe five. Yeah, and then we can make the snare a bit louder again. Hear how they kind of blend a little bit more now that the snare's been pitched up. Cool. And so the kick and the snare. So they sound um, close enough. Let's just put in a really boring two-step pattern to get us going. So two-step, one, two. Uh, so we will search that and we're going to loop it. Uh, now that doesn't sound great just yet. This kick needs to be uh, either higher pitched. Um, let's chuck a drum bus on all of this to really just rough it up. Uh, kick lower. Cool. Okay, now we need hats. Now I like to do hats in a separate drum rack. So let's find a drum rack. Uh, and I'm very aware that I only have 17 minutes left, so I'm rushing a little. Um, one trick that I like to use for hats is to go into drums and drum hits, hi-hats, and just grab a couple. I don't even care what they are because I select them uh, in context in our track here. Now I'm only going to loop a small section because we don't need two bars of variation. Um, and I'm going to loop those two bars and just drop stuff in here and see how it sounds. Ah, uh, so I like this guy. Let's give it some velocity variation. So I'm holding Alt and dragging. Cool, I like that. Let's get that. Cool, and then uh, later in the track, we'll probably want a faster hat. So let's try adding these guys in on the 16th to give it some additional pace. And we'll just mess with the velocities of them so that they don't sound exactly the same all the time. Okay, so maybe on the end there. So let's vary these. Um, that's okay. It's not great. Um, but what I 
am wondering about is if we can do this. Cool, I think that sounds really good. Let's shorten these guys up. So now our hats sound like this. Which sounds perfectly fine. One thing that I like to do is to group all of my percussion that isn't my kick and my snare and put a side chain on it. Now I'm just going to use a regular, whoop, a regular compressor today. Uh, different people have different opinions on what the right way to do side chaining is and my opinion changes all the time so I'm using a really short attack and a fairly quick release. You can hear those percussion kind of like moves a little bit with it, um, with the kick and the snare now. So we can chuck a drum bus on here as well uh, before the side chain so it doesn't impact things. Let's put just a little reverb. Actually, we want two return tracks, um, which I'll get to later. So this will be delay and this will be verb. I'm not going to set those up just yet. It's just that I remembered them. Let's chuck a reverb on these hats. Oh, this is going to come down to the wire. This is really... The decay time's on short. I like quality on high. Dry wet. Just a little bit of room ambience in there, which we could also get by creating a second drum bus group on top of this. We're probably not going to get to that today. All right, now one thing I like to do is make sure that I have more hats. So we're going to do that thing that we did before. We go to drums and we just pick a few hats at random. Uh, these look great. Whoops, we need a drum rack first. Get a drum rack. Go back into drums, go back to these hats, get a couple of those in there. Cool. Now these are just for a bit of variation, some additional texture. Um, we're just going to maybe 16th. We're just going to try random hats with uh, some velocity automation so that they sound a little bit different over time. So this one's doing this. Loop that out. Do like the, uh, the 808 hat. Let's just use that. So it's giving us just a little bit of extra grit. Let's push up the volume a little bit. I'm using a saturator to push up the volume. So I'm just giving it 10 dB of boost. It sounds like there's a bit of muck down here. Oh no, we're fine. Cool, we don't even need that EQ. If you don't need it, get rid of it. All right, uh, so one thing that we haven't added yet is just a break. So let's use a stock drum kit. And I don't know if we've got time for this, but we're going to do it anyway. Let's get any old kit. Heritage kit sounds great. OK, and we're just going to solo this for a second. We're actually going to use this as audio in two minutes. We're just going to write a real quick um, drum loop. So kick. Snare, this to be longer because we're doing it at half speed. So, whoop, longer. Cool. And let's give it just offbeat hats, uh, not on that one because it will conflict with the kick. Or maybe we'll give it some shakers in here as well. Oh, that's no good. Quieter. Let's, well, let's duplicate that out. Running real short on time here. Oh, that's a much nicer snare. Okay, so let's give it some offbeat shuffle. Cool. Cool. Now we're going to freeze this track because um, we've got some nice texture there to play with. We've now got audio. We're going to double the speed of that. 
and we've got just a nice little break to sit behind our main loop. Here's what it sounds like without the break and with the break. It's just, just a little bit different and we can EQ it like we would a regular break. Uh, we can also pitch it up like we would have to do if we were using ye oldie sampler, maybe six. Uh, and we want it to be in looped mode so we can just drag it out. Cool. So now we've got a little texture layer and we'll put that in our percussion group so that it's with everything else. Oh, I'm now hearing how long that decay is. It doesn't need to be that long at all. All right, so that's 10 minutes. We've got our drums pretty much done. Uh, and we can drag this out or duplicate this out to get a longer kind of loop. Let's move on to a bass. Uh, I really want to use Serum, but I'm gonna use Wavetable today. So, uh, we'll wait for Ableton to index Wavetable. Oh, Wave Able, no, Wave Tape. Oh. All right. Um, and we're going to build a Reese out of Wavetable, which is going to be real fast. So we want a sawtooth, lower, oh, uh, just straight open. And then we want some classic unison, more voices, and we bring the filter down. Oh, now on Oscillator 2, we could do this exact same thing. We could also tune it up 12 dB. Uh, and one of the things I like to do is to have a resonant filter uh, and then another low pass. So we could have something like that as our main base. Uh, let's get on with it. We're gonna have to come up with a nice loop um, real quick. So I don't have any note ideas in mind, but let's start not on an F for a change. Well, let's start on like a C and then we'll go to like a C sharp. So that's a weird kind of a step, right? I'm thinking this is longer. We need the filter to open up more on Wavetable. Uh, where's filter tracking? Matrix, can we pitch to uh, frequency? Want pitch? Oh no. Ah, uh, there we go. To open up this guy. Note, there we go. And this guy. And maybe we land on an F there and we can kind of hold that out for a little bit. Oh, I'm not going to get to all the stuff that I want to do today. So in my head, that needs to be uh, twice as long, so we'll duplicate time. We'll delete this, consolidate that. So I think that this loop sounds more like this maybe. And possibly that's not quite right, but let's listen. Yeah, so I think that that's cool, but what I'm actually hearing is that it loops differently like that. So it does start on an F, which I always do. It's very disappointing. Um, we could probably do something more interesting, but let's move on to getting some chords together. Oh, actually, let's give this some some wobble. So we're just gonna give it some filter movement on from LFO one.
cool. Actually, that gives me an idea. We can come down early here. Maybe we can shift up a little bit late here. So we just get some more interesting stuff going. So we could have that come up here. Oh, I'm going to totally run out of time. Uh, let's bring this G back here because it really does sound like it needs to be like that. And I kind of want this to start on a snare. Cool, and we need to tidy up the amplitude envelope because the release is just too long. Okay, now we can give this some saturation uh, just to kind of beef it up a little. Okay, cool. Now uh, we want some chords. So I'm just going to pick a piano. It's probably going to be grand piano because that's right in here. Um, now we've got two things we can do with this. I would suspect that what we should do is copy these notes down. Whoa, copy the bass line down here and grab all of it and use shift up a couple of times to pitch it up. Then we'll just move these notes around. Um, because these are going to be kind of our chord basis. So I'm drawing in the additional notes to make a minor chord here. So we can draw in notes from the scale to make this a uh, reasonable little chord, although it's kind of... A Um, so you can see that I'm trying to keep the timing different from, whoops. Uh, we'll take that up one. Um, then the bass notes, just so there's some interest. Now all these middle ones, I'm going to copy them, paste them, and then shift them down an octave so that it's kind of a bit more of an open chord. So we can do uh, something here where we have a chord uh, right at the end here. I feel like this guy should move up. So we can just have these guys come down so they mirror the uh, bass. Actually, they're better up there, aren't they? Okay, now that's where this uh, verb return is going to come in. We need a lot more reverb on this guy. So we'll put the dry weight all the way over. I get a delay into this delay reverb. I can take off some of the lows on this piano because I don't know if it needs them. Um, and then we probably need to turn the piano up a little because we've got the bass up so loud. I don't know if Saturator is the right job for that, but let's see. Cool, so that's okay. We need, uh, if we can do like, duplicate this, this piano and put an arpeggiator on it. 
um, and then switch out the piano. So let's go with, um, actually we'll just go with a default instrument sound. So we'll get a sound, we want like a synth lead. Yeah, something that isn't super intense. Whoa, that's super intense. Uh, metallic lead, maybe? Cool, and then I'm gonna go over time just because I want to. Let's find a vocal. Um, cool, that sounds good. Oh no, my time is up. All right, we're just gonna throw delay and if, uh, vo effects on this vocal. All right, what's the... Uh So it's a C. Let's turn it way down. Uh, we can put it up five, which make it an F. And then I feel like that's going to be good at the end of the bar. Uh, cool. So now our final loop sounds like this. Cool. So we could do a few fun things to this vocal while we're in overtime. Let's uh, let's get rid of the flashing. Uh, let's EQ this out a little bit. And I'm going to chuck a vocoder on this just to uh, kind of mess it up a little. I really like uh, modulator mode on vocals. Um, we can kind of push the formula. Yeah, just something like that. So it sounds a little more otherworldly. Uh, so that's going to be the loop. I'll play it out a few more times. All right, that was my liquid D&B idea in 20 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next video.